putt. Goddamn, get it done, will ya? Woo. When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes, cause his memories. We run into New York. Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna be showing you how to set up the BMW Icon Next. Now, as many of you guys know, things have moved on from the previous years with BMWs, and now BMW used this certain ICOM, which is the ICOM Next, to be able to program and code, especially for their F Series and G Series cars, as this ICOM requires to be plugged up to a router. So I'm not gonna be showing you the steps of how to set up with a router specifically, but I am gonna show you how to set up the BMW ICOM Next. It is quite the same as the normal ICOM A2 plus B plus C, which as many of you guys know is quite an orange and a black one, as many of you guys will remember, I did show you how to set that one up. But with the ICOM Next, there is a lot of people that go out and buy it and end up with a lot of issues. And I'm gonna show you what the issues are and how to know if your ICOM is actually working or it's actually a 40 unit. So let's go out to the car and I'm gonna show you how to set it all up and how to tell the difference between a 40 Icon Next and a working Icon Next and how easy they are to actually set up and that you don't have to go through all this long stuff to be able to set up the Icon Next as many people actually think because the Icon Next is actually very easy to set up and it sets up the same way as any normal Icon. It's only a lot harder when you wanna use it for F and G Series cars and you have to plug it up to a router. So let's go out and I'm gonna show you how to do that on the E Series cars. So as many of you guys will see here, this is the Icon Next that I've got in my hand. As many of you guys will see, this is a lot different to the other one I used to use. This is the newer version and this is the one that everyone is actually moving over to. The Icon Next does plug into a Wi-Fi router and it runs wirelessly to the car as well and can be used for wireless programming later in the future for the G-Series and things like that. So then that way you don't have to be connected to the car at all times. Now this is the new um, Icon that everybody's moving over to and this is a common problem that a lot of people end up buying them and end up finding up their 40. Now as you'll see, I've actually got two of them, which is another one right here. And I'm gonna be plugging them up and I'm gonna be showing you the difference between them both and what a 41 is and what a fully working one's meant to look like. So let's go on to it and I'm gonna plug it all up and then show you. So the first thing you're going to get is your OBD port, which comes with the ICOM itself. So the first thing you're going to want to do is locate your OBD port, which is right up here. And then you're just going to want to plug that in. And as you see here, the ICOM next wire is completely different to the old ICOM. So what you'll do is find it on the position here, then you're going to plug it in. So what we'll do is we'll get that. There you see there, we're just going to slot that right in. And then as you'll see there, we've now got all the four green lights, which everything's green. So that's how you know that one's working. So as you'll see there, we've now got ISTA set up now. If you've been using a cable for a long time and you want to be able to set it up to use with an ICOM, all you have to do is go up to here, which is what a lot of people are going to want to use this for is ISTA and go up to vehicle interface and then change this over to dealer organization ICOM. Now you're just going to click OK to that. And then what you're going to want to do is come back to your ICOM. You're going to want to connect your Ethernet cable into your ICOM. Do so you see that one's now in? And what you're going to want to do is get your other end and connect it into your laptop. Now, once everything's connected, as you see, the Ethernet's in the back of the computer. It's connected all up to the ICOM and into the car, like you'll see there, in sync. And you've set it all up on ISTA. It should read the car straight away. So if we go into operations and read out vehicle data, do make sure that the ignition is on and your ignition lights are on. So it's got power to the car. Then you're just going to go complete identification. Now, when you go to complete identification, do we just wait for it to connect to the ICOM? And as you'll see there, the icon will come up. Then what you're going to want to connect is click that one. Then you're going to click set up connection. Then it should start scanning the car. Now, we'll see now if it starts scanning the car. And now as you'll see there, it says is ignition switched on or pad active. Now, this is a common fault that a lot of you guys get when you first get your icon next. And you run around checking everything to figure out what the issue is, either it's the software or the icon. Let me assure you, this is nothing to do with the software. This is all to do with these. There's been a lot of certain clones going around with these and a lot of them are faulty. Now you will stumble across this problem and you're gonna run your hurt self around like a headless chicken thinking, is it your software? Is it the icon? Is it this? Is it that? Is your settings co connected correctly? And all of it will be set correctly. This is nothing to do with any of the software or anything. It's all to do with the ICOM itself. The ICOM is faulty. I know a lot of you are gonna see, you've got all green lights and you're gonna say there's no problem with it. This is a common, common fault and it means the ICOM's faulty inside. It's the board because it can't switch from the, all the different lines from the PT can to the K line fast enough 
to register with the car. This one has been specifically built for the E39, E46 side and it hasn't got the switchable line for the E60s and the F-Series and up. Therefore, it was not registering and it's class as 40. This is why if you do get one like this, these are the kind of messages you'll see. You'll also not be able to use IMPA and you won't be able to use ISTA either using this ICOM. So you'll have to send it back. It's usually the ICOM that is at fault and nothing to do with either the settings on the ICOM or this or that. It's all to do with the icom itself that's 40 it's not going to be to do the wi-fi settings on it as you're going to probably read up online it's nothing to do with any of it it's a common issue a lot of you're going to face now what i'm going to do is switch over to the working one and i'm going to show you how easy it's to set up and get fully working just with that one that fully works and it's just simple plug and play so as you'll see there now guys i've now switched over the icom from the old one that weren't working and now put in the fully working one so now what we're going to go ahead and do again is scan the computer again and now we should see it all fully working now you can always start off the ICOMS 40 because it won't show the voltage either on the graph which now you should see the voltage on the new ICOM that we've connected so we'll just let it scan and as you'll see there the voltage is up there and it's free which wasn't on the other one now we're just going to click this one up here then we're going to go down here to set up connection and as you're going to see it should start scanning and it will work fully as you'll see right there it starts picking up everything. Now these are the faults that a lot of you end up getting with your icon next, and then you end up saying it's crap, or it's this, or it don't work, or this or that, and that's just simply not the case. The icon is faulty, it's nothing to do with your software, it's nothing to do with anything else. There is a lot of faulty icon necks going around, like this one, and this is why I keep this to show you guys the fault of them, they're just faulty. They are meant to work straight out the box the same way any other icon would work like this you just plug it in and it'll work like your old one you're not meant to have issues or connect it any different way unless you're doing it for f and g series so i hope this is going to clear up a lot of the issues that a lot of you guys are having it fully functions just like a normal icon and if you are having problems it will be your icon next so return it and get a genuine one or a proper one this one right here is a clone and this one right here is genuine and i'm probably sure you can probably see that by how roughed up this one is compared to the original bmw one that i've got here this is an original that is a clone original clone and the clones never work so try and avoid them at all costs okay guys so there you have it i'm just showing you now how to set up a bmw icom next and now i've just shown you how easy it is to actually get a 40 unit and then you guys will be running around like headless chickens trying to find out what the actual fault is now i get a lot of comments on my old icon one saying a lot of people have bought the icon next and it's not working i also get a lot of you going out and buying them still today and still find that they're not working and then you're trying to figure out how to set them up you've read everywhere online you've done everything it said and it's still not working the fact is it's usually the icon that is actually 40. The ICOM A2B plus C, which is the orange and gray one, as many of you guys would have seen from me using it, is more reliable than the ICOM Next. If you're gonna buy a clone, you're gonna end up with probably a 41. The original BMW one like I have works flawlessly and I ain't had an issue. I did buy a clone, I wanted to test it out, but I just kept it at the end of the day. It doesn't cost me nothing because you guys know I get the money back from these videos. So the ICOM just stayed here as a unit to actually show you guys how you can easily end up with a 41 and you can even go 40 while you're actually doing someone's car. It's something I would never even trust because if you're in the middle of programming, especially on F-Series and it just gives up or packs up and it damages their whole car, you're gonna be liable for it. So I would take this advice and if I was you, I would not use a cloned Chinese Icom Next by any means necessary and definitely on anybody's cars, especially if you're gonna be doing customers' cars. So I hope this is gonna have taught you something, guys, and I hope now you would learn the difference between the Icom Next clone and the Icom Next, the genuine Icom Next. Thank you very much for watching. It's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.